Total ankle replacement is an operation that we do like total hip and total knee to treat ankle arthritis. So ankle arthritis, what, what is ankle arthritis? It's where the cartilage wears away on the talus, which is the ankle bone, and the tibia, and that causes pain and stiffness, swelling, and deformity. And ankle arthritis is not as common as hip and knee arthritis, which is surprising. Um, the ankle actually is extremely resilient to uh, arthritis. Um, it's actually got a smaller surface area, the cartilage is thinner, and yet the forces are greater than with hips and knees. But um, so the ankle is amazingly resilient in terms of uh, not developing arthritis, but unfortunately it does occur. And what are the causes? The causes are trauma, so an ankle fracture that can lead to joint damage. Um, the other causes can be instability. So if somebody's got an unstable ankle where they've rolled their ankle and it's become loose, that could lead to accumulated damage over many years and the patient could present later with uh, arthritis. Um, our weight is also a factor. So as we get heavier as a population, that, that puts more pressure on our ankles. And um, also malalignment, so that's where somebody's got a high arch or very flat feet can put uneven pressure on the ankle joint and lead to arthritis problems uh, long term. And finally, inflammatory arthritis like rheumatoid arthritis can lead to um, ankle problems. So how do we treat ankle arthritis? Obviously there's non-operative treatment in terms of uh, pain medication, uh, physiotherapy, but that ha that reaches a point where that's no longer effective and somebody needs surgical treatment for that. And the two ways that ankle arthritis is treated is an ankle fusion or an ankle replacement. And um, we never talk about knee fusion or hip fusion to treat um, knee arthritis or hip arthritis because a fused knee is a, is a disaster. An ankle fusion can be a good operation in terms of relieving pain. And if it's fused in exactly the right position, patients can function quite well with a, an ankle fusion. And it is a robust operation, doesn't wear out or break down uh, over, over time. The two problems with an ankle fusion is that it loses movement. So you lose all the ankle movement. And uh, for a lot of patients, that is a critical factor that uh, makes an ankle fusion not a very attractive operation. The other problem is over time, it, it, because the ankle doesn't move, it puts pressure on other joints around the ankle, and that can lead to arthritis developing in other joints. So an ankle replacement potentially can relieve pain but preserve movement, and that is the big advantage. The potential disadvantage to ankle replacement compared to fusion is that uh, we're not as confident with exactly how long ankle replacements will last uh, at this point as we are with hips and knees. And with a lot of patients, there is a risk that they will uh, require revision in their, in their lifetime. Our revision options have improved remarkably over the last few years. And so we're getting, and our ability to put an ankle replacement in accurately um, is increasing our confidence with uh, how our ankle replacements are going to do long term. So how do we do an ankle replacement? It's done, uh, firstly it starts with preoperatively, with a careful preoperative assessment. We also do a CT scan, a special CT scan that uh, is then assessed by a team of engineers who come up with a surgical plan. That surgical plan looks something like this on the computer here where we get detailed images uh, and detail about our, our operative plan. And I review that. I can adjust it any way I need to. Once I'm happy with that plan and I approve it, then they 3D print uh, some jigs. There's one for the tibia, one for the tail. This is an example of the, the tibial jig and it's patient specific. So it'll only fit that patient. It won't fit anybody else in the entire world. So the jig is patient specific. The actual implants that we put in are uh, a range of sizes, so they're standardised, but the, the actual jig is personalised. So we use, we, we make an incision at the front of the ankle, and um, with foot and ankle surgery, we're always looking after the nerves, because as the foot, as like the hand, has got lots of nerves. 
And uh, so the nerves that we worry about is a nerve that comes here called the superficial perineal nerve that comes across and it crosses the bottom part of the wound. We always look for that and protect it. The other nerve is called the deep perineal nerve that runs down here on the front of the ankle that supplies feeling here. That runs with an artery and that's on the surface of the tibia and we protect that and retract that during the operation. So we're very, very careful with the soft tissues because wound healing is one of our primary goals with an ankle replacement. So with careful protection of the soft tissues, we expose the tibia, then we put the, the tibial jig on, we use x-ray in theatre to make sure our alignment's correct, and we put pins in and proceed with the surgery from there. So the advantage of that is it sets up a lot of the plans or the, the goals in terms of depth of resection, alignment, rotation, all these different things are, are that we determine preoperatively, it allows us to reproduce in theatre. So the, the jig is the link between our preoperative plan and actually reproducing that in theatre. Um, we've also got a similar jig for the uh, talus, and that's an example of it there on the computer, and that allows us to prepare the, the talus. So the actual, this is an example of uh, an ankle replacement. Um, it is a little uh, small plate on the tibia that uh, is uncemented and the bone grows on to give that long-term fixation. It's a plastic disc that's fixed into the tibial component and a cap on the, the talus. And um, so that allows the patient to weight, weight bear and move. Now, <clears throat> with the ankle replacement, once we've got those components in place, we do a careful closure. Now, it's very common that we have to do other operations as well as the ankle replacement because the three goals with an ankle replacement are primary wound healing that I talked about, component alignment, and that's where the, the, uh, the personalized jigs make the difference, and finally, soft tissue balancing. The other part, and the soft tissue balancing can be tightening of ligaments, where sometimes we need to release tight tissues, sometimes we need to do an Achilles lengthening, because a tight Achilles is a very common problem. And then this is the hind foot at the heel. The alignment of that's very, very important. We need to make sure that our hind foot alignment is correct. And sometimes we need to do further surgery to fine tune the hind foot alignment. And finally, sometimes we need to do stuff to fine tune the forefoot alignment. So there can be a, a series of other operations we have to do as well as the ankle replacement. It's not uncommon for us to spend two hours doing the ankle replacement and another two hours doing all the other procedures related to that. At the end of the day, we need a well-aligned, well-balanced um, ankle replacement with uh, primary wound healing. That's what we're aiming for. And so the results we get, essentially, a patient will be a good ankle replacement, a patient's happier than a good ankle fusion. And um, they, we know from studies that the actual, it reproduces a better walking pattern, uh, better energy efficiency, and a more uh, normal reproduction of what the patient had before uh, they developed arthritis. So with uh, what are the problems can occur with ankle replacement? Well, they can be wound problems, and that can lead to infection, and that's a very serious problem. So we're extremely careful about that. We see the patient one week and two week after the surgery and keep a close eye on that wound. Um, there can be nerve or blood vessel injury and the nerves we talked about are the, the, the two other nerves. That can lead to some numbness, but if it gets caught up in the scar tissue, that can become a painful area caught in the aroma and that's what we want to avoid. Um, there can be, there is a risk that a patient may require a revision uh, in their lifetime. The ankle replacements that we put in now we really expect to last um, at least 10 years, and we're hoping that they're going to last longer than that, but we don't know at this point. And we, with my patients, we follow them up on a yearly basis with x-rays, clinical examination, and we've got a scoring system, um, and we record our results. Um, the results are also uh, registered on the National Joint Replacement Registry, which is run by the Australian Orthopaedic Association, so all the hips, knees and ankles that we put in are followed up um, so that we can improve our results over time and techniques. So 
ankle arthritis is an extremely disabling um, condition and ankle replacement is an increasingly successful solution to that and I'm very enthusiastic about ankle replacements and uh, with new technology now we can put them those ankle replacements in more accurately with better long-term outcomes and with greater confidence.